Welcome to a fresh edition of Headlines Nigeria on Internet Television International, ITI. My name is Grace Ukot with summaries of news, politics, business and sports from Nigerian dailies. Let's move over to the first paper for today. This day newspaper says, U.S., we've missed Nigeria's voice on global platform. The United States of America yesterday declared that Nigeria's voice on the global platform has been missed, expressing its desire for a really dynamic and robust leadership, which Nigeria is known for in the international and regional fora. Abdul Mutalab, Nigeria seeks to observe trial. The case against Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab, who attempted to blow up a United States bound Delta airliner on Christmas Day last year will come up in a Michigan U.S. court today. U.S.-based lawyer Mr. Kayo De Oladili has disclosed that the federal government wants to make an appearance in the case. Bath Naji, now special advisor on power. In line with his promise to strengthen the administrative structure to drive reform in the power sector, President Goodluck Jonathan yesterday named a former Minister of Science and Technology, Professor Bath Naji, as his special advisor on power. Former NDLEA boss Lafia G bags 16 years in jail. Former chairman of the Na National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Alhaji Bello Lafiaji, and his personal assistant, Usman Amali, were convicted and sentenced to 16 years imprisonment yesterday. His personal assistant, Usman Am Amali, was sentenced to seven years. The sentences would run concurrently for four and three years, respectively. And now, Guardian newspaper, fresh troubles for Ogula 4. As ICPC slams another 17 count corruption charge on ex PDP chairman. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission on Monday brought fresh charges against former national chairman of the PDP, Prince Vincent Ogulafo, and two others charged with defrauding the federal government of about 104 million naira via contract awards. Constitution Amendment, Ogunlewe, others differ with Lagos Speaker on role of assemblies. Former Minister of Work, Senator Adesheye Ogunlewe, legal practitioners Mr. Dele Adeshino and Mr. Bami Dele Aturu on Monday disagreed with the Speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Adeyemi Ikuforiji, on his position that the state assemblies had input in the Constitution Amendment and they can still bring about changes in the recommendations already made by the National Assembly. Lead poisoning. NMA blames Zamfara government. The Zamfara State Chapter of the Nigeria Medical Association has blamed the state government for its careless attitude towards the activities of illegal mining in the state, which resulted in the death of over 100 children. This is part of the observation of the NMA in a communique issued after carrying out situational analysis on the occurrence in five communities of the state. Vanguard newspaper, health minister appeals to doctors over pay. Minister of Health, Professor Onye Buchichuku, yesterday appealed to the National Association of Resident Doctors not to embark on another round of nationwide strike. Chuku made the appeal following insistence by the aggrieved doctors to down tools over non-payment of the consolidated medical salary structure for medical and dental officers from January 2010 to date. Punch newspaper, reps probe 10 billion naira Independence Day budget. There were indications on Monday that the House of Representatives had begun a probe into the 10 billion naira budget proposed by the presidency for ceremonies marking Nigeria's 50th independence anniversary. A member of the House Committee on Appropriation, Mr. Obuefi Ozongbachi, said the committee was looking into the matter and would submit a report to the House in plenary upon resumption from its two-week break. Don't appoint Iwu as ambassador, CLO tells Jonathan. The Civil Liberties Organization on Monday alleged that there was a plan by the federal government to appoint the immediate past chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Maurice Iwu, as Nigeria's ambassador to Brazil. It said that although it, has, it was the right of every Nigerian to aspire to appointment into any office, it would be disappointing, like most Nigerians, if President Goodluck Jonathan has indeed concluded plans to appoint Iwu as a foreign envoy representing the country in a strategic country as Brazil.
And now politics, Vanguard newspaper. Group sues PDP, 56 other parties over zoning. A political pressure group, People's Zone Alliance, PZA, has ta taken the People's Democratic Party and 56 other political parties in the country to court to seek an interpretation over the issue of zoning ahead of the 2011 elections. How plot to sabotage Jonathan's visit was foiled, Udwagan. 24 hours after President Kulak Jonathan was one day visit to Delta State, the governor, Dr. Emmanuel Udwagan, has revealed how some persons whose names he did not disclose tried to sabotage the visit. Udwagan said some persons sent misleading text messages to Deltans that the visit had been cancelled because the president would not honor the invitation. We'll give Nigerians good governance, Jonathan. President Goodluck Jonathan yesterday again promised to give Nigerians transparent, good governance. President Jonathan was speaking to a delegation from Ondo State, led by Governor Olusegu Mimiko, during a courtesy visit at State House yesterday. We will do our best within the period available to give transparent, good governance to Nigerians, he assured the delegation. Punch newspaper, 2011, President's wife seeks financial support for female aspirants. The wife of the President, Mrs. Patience Jonathan, on Monday called for financial and moral support for women interested in contesting elective positions in 2011. Jonathan's wife made the promise in Abuja on Monday at the Maiden National Summit on Women's Participation in Politics with the theme, Women in Democracy, an Imperative for Good Governance and National Development. And now moving over to business news. The Punch newspaper. Nigeria loses $2 billion yearly to foreign welders and artisans. The Senate Committee on Education on Monday in Kaduna said that the inability of the nation's polytechnics to produce middle-level technical manpower needed in the oil industry cost Nigeria about $2 billion annually. The committee expressed regret that a situation where all companies operating in the country employed the services of foreign nationals, especially Philippines, who did not have better qualification than Nigerians for executing technical jobs such as welding had continued to worsen the problem of unemployment in the country. Vanguard newspaper, Content Act, no waivers for oil and gas operators. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, Mr. Enes Wapa, said oil and gas operators and multinational service companies would not be encouraged to seek waivers in the course of implementing the Nigerian Content Act. The Punch newspaper, Nigeria needs $6 billion annually for stable power, federal government. The federal government has said that it requires $6 billion annually for the next 10 years to guarantee stable electricity and achieve the electricity target set in the Vision 2020 policy. And now Sports News, Punch newspaper says, death threats, tight security for Cater. Security around Nigeria's World Cup team will keep a close eye on midfielder Sani Keita after he received more than a thousand death threats from home, South Africa's police said on Monday. Nigerian soccer authorities said over the weekend that Keita had been inundated with death threats, mostly via emails from Nigeria, after being sent off in the Super Eagles 2-1 loss to Greece. Fufu Eba caused problems for Eagles, Aminu. A former chairman of the Nigeria Football Association, Colonel Abdul Mumuni Aminu, has said the Eagles lost 2-1 to Greece on Thursday because they were too heavy to move after consuming Nigerian food. Lagabak must deliver or go, Toro. A former Secretary General of the Nigeria Football Association, Sani Toro, has said Las Lagabak's retention should only be based on the country's performance at the ongoing World Cup. Toro said Lagerbach should be allowed to continue on the job if he is able to take the team to the second round of the event. And Vanguard newspaper, attack, 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 Rufai advises Lagerbach. Former Nigeria goalkeeper Peter Rufai has advised coach Las Lagerbach to employ an aggressive approach when the Eagles face South Korea in their last group match of the World Cup. Rufai said the coach must deploy players who are fit and ready to die for Nigeria. And that's our take on this edition. Thanks for logging on.